Welcome to sunny Norway. We are now on uh, the roof of our little VW T3 Vanagon. And as you can see, we have installed our first solar panel. And we came up with a super simple, easy solution. Do-it-yourself style that I think anyone uh, will be able to, to do. So I wanted to share uh, how we did it. And you can see the results we have been uh, getting so far. Quickly about the panel we have on top here. This is a 100 watt flexible solar panel, which is really low weight, just a few kilos. And as you can see, we were able to just mount it in one of these dips in our roof. It's really flush. It doesn't build up any height. And uh, so far it's been working really good. The way we mounted it was super easy. We bought a little plate, like a plastic plate to have underneath to keep uh, the panel from soaking up water if it gets uh, anything lying below it. And then uh, we cut that board and we, we glued it onto the, the panel and then we stick it onto the roof. And as an extra security and to help drain the water, we put some tape at the edges. And uh, here you can see the, the wires coming from the panel. And <laughs> it's a really, do it yourself way as you can see here. We have uh, covered uh, the cables with tape, drilled a quick hole in the roof here and uh, put the MC4 uh, cables down there. And from there we had to get a new set of cables, a longer one to get it all the way into our van. And uh, for that we needed to drill some holes and uh, then we just basically found a way to our battery system, which by the way is super easy. There is no solar charge uh, controller here, no inverter, no nothing. It's all plug and play really. So let's take a look inside. So this is where the cable enters the car. Uh, we have sealed the hole here. We just drilled a few holes and then it's of course important to not connect the uh, MC4 uh, end part so that you can actually thread these cables in. So we have the, the plus and the minus wire going in here and as you can see on top of our self-built shelf here they keep uh, extending into the vehicle. This is a really fresh install so we haven't tweaked it um, to be really pretty just yet. But then basically it goes behind the panel here uh, with our other wiring and then it's uh, passing through the um, the cupboard here and then under the sofa where we have our battery units. So this is the, what we use for our power system uh, right now. This is the solar charge cable coming in and uh, we just put it on the kitchen here so you can see it more easily. Uh, these are the plus and the minus wires coming from the, the roof and they are connected to an adapter like this which make them go into our eight millimeter input here. And as you can see now, it's uh, charging. And if you come closer here, right now we're getting yeah, about 40 watts in and our fridge is, uh, yeah, it's outputting about 70 watts for our fridge. Uh, and you can see the status here and how things are. And of course you can cycle through here to see additional information about the battery and on our battery there is a built-in inverter so you can have both DC and uh, AC and as you see here this is our um, AC connection right now it's uh, powering our fridge which you can alter between uh, 12 and 230 volts and uh, down here you can see it's able to constantly deliver 300 watts and it can surge up to 1200. The good thing about this one is that it, it's portable so it's really lightweight. It's um, 400 watt hours and this particular unit is from uh, a company called Gold Zero but there are uh, numerous companies delivering uh, power banks like this. What we found out to be the most tricky part about this install, believe it or not, was getting <laughs> this adapter we had the cables lying around for a long time but of course we needed to get it to work with the actual power bank um, our battery so once we got this we basically did the install in uh, like less than a day 
it went really quickly and we've never done this before. We haven't been using it for that long yet, but I think this is going to be a really good addition to the, to the car. Um, we have this battery system now, which is going to collect the solar energy. And we have a secondary battery placed under here, which is charged via the, the alternator when we're driving and also when we're plugged in at the campsite. That's a quick overview of our system. Let's introduce the pros and the cons. So the first pro is the easy install, as I mentioned. I think this can be done by anyone as long as you have a, a drill, some glue and some tape and uh, have the knowledge to uh, fix the cables so that the adapter uh, will be working. The system is uh, plug and play, so it's really, really simple. You put the MC4 connectors to the adapter, put adapter in your tin to your uh, battery, and then you're set, you're good to go. And the rest is done by the solar panel and uh, the sunny weather. Of course, renewable energy and a second way of collecting energy when you're on the road. And the fact that the unit is portable is also really convenient for us. We have made sure to have enough slack on the cable so that we can move it around uh, in the interior of the van. But uh, also we can just disconnect the entire thing and bring it outside once we have a bonfire at night or need to power something outside, there's no problem. And you saw the, the grab handle is really sturdy, so it's, uh, it's really easy to, to move it around. Another good thing about uh, the unit is that you can charge it, uh, as I said, by solar via the wall uh, at home, the wall socket, or you can, while you're driving, you can actually use like a 12 volt socket uh, car adapter. You just plug it into the, the car uh, up front and uh, the alternator will do the rest once you're driving. So on cloudy days, you're able to get power and store it for later use as well. Another good thing about uh, the unit is the control you have by reading out the, um, the battery percent, the input and the overall status of the system. If you have a regular uh, car battery, as a leisure battery, there's really no way to keep an overview of how um, much power you have left. The battery system will output both 12 volts and uh, 230 volts. DC, AC, it's really convenient because you can charge up your laptop um, and other units that you have to have a, like a regular wall socket. That's a really convenient factor for us as we use our laptop and camera system and drone battery charger and everything. Our Goal Zero Yeti 400 is a lithium battery, which means it's much lighter than a regular battery. So it's easier to handle, move around, carry, take out, etc. And that's a real plus for us. This uh, do-it-yourself setup is really flush. And uh, then I'm thinking about the top uh, where we have the solar panel. Because it's flexible, it's really thin, and we are able to just mount it directly onto our uh, roof surface. And uh, this means that you don't get extra drag when, once you're driving high speeds. And also, if you have a really tight uh, garage or parking space, you won't be building any extra height. And our garage is like, we have this much clearance and we need every, every inch of clearance we can. So uh, having that small and thin uh, panel means that we are not having any problems entering the garage. And uh, yeah. That would be unfortunate if we had that rigid panel because those are a bit thicker and it could cause an issue for us. And this old van has a really quirky mechanism for lifting up the roof and uh, having a really small, thin and light panel means that uh, we are reducing the weight that we need to push up and also the weight that the roof needs to support once it is in an upright position. So that's another benefit for us. And the last uh, pro is that this is a completely passive system. The only thing you need to make sure is that you have the eight millimeter input uh, into your uh, unit and the rest is done automatically. You don't have to think about anything. Alternative would of course be to have this uh, unit just laying around without uh, a permanent charge solution to it. And then you can bring it out of your car and bring like a portable panel and then you can place it wherever you want. But that needs some action and it needs to be done once you are uh, at your destination. But as I said, this will just power all the time as long as there is uh, sufficient sunlight for it to work. <laughs> so the cons, the first one would be the price. Because this is an advanced unit with uh, several ways of charging your units with both DC and AC, and you also you have a panel to 
uh, check the status of your battery and there's a built-in inverter and everything it's uh, a bit more advanced system than what you would uh, end up getting if you just bought a regular battery it's not going to be the most uh, cheap solution if you count amp hour for amp hour but then again i think the simplicity of the unit makes it worth uh, its price the next con is uh, for us at least would be getting this adapter believe it or not but we struggle a lot and we are in norway and all of the big sites such as amazon and ebay they wouldn't ship the correct adapter to us but luckily in the end we managed to get this one it took like three, four week to get delivered. And the price was also stupid because it's just an adapter. But uh, anyway, now it works. And I think it's gonna be much easier if you're in the US to get the uh, whole of this adapter. The next con is that there is no inverter or solar charge uh, controller to being able to switch between the Yeti and our secondary uh, or the leisure battery. So the only, system we can charge in our car would be this uh, Goal Zero unit. Our leisure battery is dependent on our car's alternator while we drive or when we're plugged into a campsite. So if you end up with the other solution, then you might be able to be a bit more flexible on which uh, unit you want to charge. But for us, we are stuck with this one. The next con would be that our flexible solar panel is not as tough as the rigid ones and the life expectancy is lower on the flexible panels than on the rigid ones. I think the work we did while installing it would make it last a bit longer by having a, another layer underneath to drain water away, but uh, only time will tell and uh, the rigid panels are for sure tougher and will last longer. The last con is that our solar panel is completely stuck. There's no way of positioning it according to the sunlight. The only way to do it is by parking the car another place to make sure that the panel is exposed. I've seen some rigid panels where you can flip the panel up according to the sunlight to ensure that you get uh, as much efficiency as possible. But ours is, yeah, as mentioned, completely stuck. And uh, even though this is a con, it's also like a trade-off to have it so flush and easily um, installed as uh, ours was. So uh, just have that in mind. That's the pros against the cons and you'll have to see for yourself if you think this solution is the right one for you. This is the way it looks uh, inside of the van. We put this under the bench here. This is the solar cables currently <laughs> just laying around on the floor. And as you can see, we just cut some uh, holes here to make sure we can extend it and have the, the sofa in place at the same time. And once we are driving, just make sure that this is connected like so and then this unit will do the rest automatically for us. Because this is a really fresh installment we haven't decided if we want to, to cut this open to have easier access to the ports or if this will do for us. To see how this setup performs and where our trusty van takes us next be sure to subscribe to my channel for future updates. Let me know if you end up using any of the information provided in this video and leave a comment if you have any questions. See you in the next one.